got to get you inside this, baby. Inside? It's all leather now. It's all leather and suede. No more funky stuff. Oh, man. That is exactly what we were looking for. Get him to talk, see. talk a little bit. While many auto restoration reality TV shows aren't everyone's cup of tea, the success achieved by History Channel's Counting Cars is undeniable. Besides providing his viewers with jaw-dropping classic car modifications, the legendary Danny the Count Cooker and his expert team are always in our minds, either through their eccentric personalities or unquestionable talent. Now that it's been a decade since Counting Cars premiered, the most loyal section of its viewing audience can remember the most memorable restorations shown in the series with a smile on their faces. However, the question of what happened to those former cast members, such as Scott Jones, seems to resurface now more than ever. So what's up with Scott Jones nowadays? Why did he leave Count's Customs? And where does he work now? Is he ever coming back to his old job as a manager? Keep with us to discover the answer to all these questions. Any keen fan of counting cars remembers Scott Jones well for his sassy attitude, emblematic dark sunglasses, and for being Danny Coker's former right-hand man. His work as a manager and accountant in Count's Customs made him easily recognized by the audience. And though he was sometimes bothered by Danny's attitude, he was humble enough to admit how talented his boss was. Scott's charismatic personality and increasing popularity during his time in Counting Cars made him the right man to attend fan meetings and garage tours for the show. Nonetheless, all of that came to an end in 2013, when he left in the middle of the series' third season. As explained in Counting Cars, his son's birth prompted him to move to Tennessee, which actually makes sense since months before his departure, he told the news website The Greenville Sun that he'd lived in Tennessee years prior to the show's premiere and missed the place. Describing Greenville as his home, Scott revealed his plans to move back there as soon as he could, saying, I'll spend more time in Vegas before I get done. I'm 43 now. I'm ready for a slower lifestyle. All in all, it's evident that Scott's exit from the show was a willing decision on his part. Besides wanting to live a slower and more tranquil lifestyle, Scott Jones's choice to move out of Las Vegas goes deeper than just comfortability. Scott's connection with Greenville in Tennessee started in the late 2000s when his sister Mona White moved there with her husband Tim. As it happens, the couple had a successful trucking business in Nevada, but their desire to spend their retirement in a tranquil place won in the end. Eventually, Scott fell in love with Greenville too, moved there, and was soon hired by the company Kikers Extreme Automotive. Though Scott often traveled to Las Vegas to visit his then-fiancé, he didn't make the move until he was hired by Danny Cooker in 2011. However, it's apparent that he was never into the big city lifestyle. When someone asked me how my day was here, they sincerely want to know. You say that in Vegas, but that's just a bull line you run by someone, he said to the Greenville Sun. Also, Scott and his former boss Dale Kiker from Kiker's Extreme were clearly on good terms. As Kiker said in an interview in 2013, he and Scott were planning on establishing a garage shop in the near future. Unbeknownst to many, Scott Jones is active in the entertainment world nowadays. As it happens, he took back his job at Kiker's Extreme Automotive following his return to Greenville in 2013, and though Scott stayed low for almost a decade, his career has taken an unexpected but welcome turn in recent times. As the Greenville Sun reported in late 2021, Kiker's Extreme was to be featured in the newest Netflix series, Swap Shop, Dash for Cash. To be premiered in November that year, the show consists of the business sell and swap activities involving vintage car parts, comics, action figures, in fact, anything considered collectible. Under the motto, one person's trash is another person's treasure, Swap Shop shows Dale Kiker's wife, Lisa, promoting the shop's artifacts on radio, while Dale and Scott Jones are often out hunting for hidden car treasures in the north of Tennessee. Although the show hasn't had a lot of promotion on social media, the production is apparently successful enough for Netflix to order a second season, as seen on Kiker's extreme Facebook page. However, the best part about all of this is the opportunity to see Scott again on our TV screens after so many years. Following Scott Jones' departure from Count's Customs, the shop needed someone reliable to take his place. The most obvious option was always Kevin Mack, who besides having enough knowledge about the business, has also been Danny Coker's best friend for almost three decades. Becoming the Count's right-hand man surely wasn't an easy task, but Kevin Mack successfully took on the job. His trustworthy opinion also helps Danny to make the right decisions while looking for cars for sale, as Counting Cars knows very well. As Danny told the website Matt and Jess, Kevin is thinking two or three months down the road about what a car is going to look like when it's done. I think his creativity and my organization work very well together. Unsurprisingly, Kevin and Danny's good work dynamic is nothing new for them. They met in 1994 while riding motorcycles and instantly became friends, eventually joining the same bike group to go on trips to Los 
Angeles or around Arizona. After Danny established Count's Customs in the early 2000s, Kevin went to work for him after leaving his labor job behind. As Apex Automotive Magazine reports, seeing how Kevin and Danny's longtime friendship wasn't affected by their then new professional relationship, it's obvious why Kevin was the right man to replace Scott. Besides Scott Jones, the only popular cast member of Counting Cars to ever leave the show is Roly Sabo, the usually light-hearted polisher of Count's Customs, the one who usually showed customers the finished cars. One of the most memorable traits about Roly was his characteristic Hungarian accent, plus of course, the fact that he was very talented in his job. As a regular in Counting Cars for over six seasons, Roly gained the hearts of the audience and huge popularity. Unsurprisingly, Roly's departure from the show left his fans flabbergasted and confused, and the fact that neither Danny nor Counting Cars ever explained why he left only worsened the situation. Rumors were soon circulating online, linking his exit from the show to the stealing of his van, which apparently contained his work equipment, valued at thousands of dollars. Though there's no way to confirm the real reason behind Roly's exit from Count's Customs, it's nice to know that he's doing well nowadays. As seen on his Instagram page, Roly often travels to the US for car exhibitions and conventions, in addition to establishing a high-tech transportation business with his brother. While it's almost certain that Roly won't return to counting cars, in a 2021 Instagram post, he said that he's thankful that regardless of the years he hasn't been on TV, people still contact him thanks to the show. One of the biggest scandals to which counting cars has ever been linked doesn't have anything to do with TV drama. It all goes back to 2013, when a man named Joseph Frontiera was hired by Count Customs through a hiring firm in Delaware. Though Frontiera appeared in Counting Cars a couple of times, he didn't have much of a chance to become a memorable cast member. His time in Count's Customs soon ended when his bosses discovered that he used $75,000 of the business's money to buy airline tickets and pay for his Range Rover. On top of all of that, he also forgot to pay Count's Customs taxes, resulting in an $18,000 penalty for the business. Reportedly, Frontier's easiness in committing such a crime was due to the fact that his bosses in Count's Customs put him in charge of the company's assets, which served him well after he also stole the company's seals with Danny Coker's and Kevin Mack's signatures. However, Frontier apparently shouldn't have been given said privileges, as he'd previously been charged with embezzlement. Count's Customs accused Frontier of theft and the hiring company which furred him for allegedly hiding his criminal records. The case was settled in 2020 with financial compensation in favor of Counts Customs. The second most famous scandal involving Counts Customs had to do with another lawsuit, though this time it was against the shop for allegedly fraudulently withholding money they supposedly paid for a car. The lawsuit was filed by Jeanette and Paul Hurt, a couple from Nevada who commissioned Counts Customs to buy and restore a 1967 Ford Mustang Coupe for $50,000. According to court papers, the initial payment included $11,000 to buy the car, with the rest of the money to pay for the shop's crew labor. They were also told that counting cars would showcase the car in an episode meant to be filmed in late 2013. However, only a couple of months later, the couple was told that the future car wouldn't be featured in the show, but that the schedule to complete the restoration remained the same. In October that year, the Hurt family visited Count's Customs, only to find that the business had bought a 1967 Mustang for them instead of the car agreed. On top of that, discovering that Scott Jones, who coincidentally took their commission, no longer worked in the shop. Fortunately for the Joneses, the lawsuit didn't include him, but the case surely damaged Count Customs' reputation for a while. The case was eventually settled out of court. Unknown by many, Count's custom story started in the late 1990s. As it happens, Danny Coker has always been involved with auto mechanics, having been taught by his father, but also learning a lot by himself during his early years. Danny's adventures as a biker eventually led him to establish his motorcycle repair business, becoming so popular in little time that it ended up expanding into a fixing and rebuilding car shop. By the time Danny hired his longtime friend Kevin Mack for the business in 2006, the garage was apparently really busy with work, although still only having seven workers. Nowadays, Count Customs has over 40 employees and is known around the world thanks to the History Channel. The shop's crew has also been personally affected by these changes, as the fame provided by counting cars follows them everywhere. It's gotten to the point where almost anywhere we go, there's a fan there to talk to you about something. It amazes me, frankly, Danny Kroger told Matt and Jess in 2013. Nonetheless, Danny also affirmed that he and his team see themselves as entertainers not as celebrities. Count's Customs has always been Danny Coker's main business, but as an entrepreneur, he has expanded into other fields as well. In 2011, 
He established his Las Vegas' bar Feels Good in partnership with rock singer Vince Neil, but who not long after sold his share to Danny. Left as the main owner of the business, Danny rebranded the place as Count's Vamped Rock Bar and Grill, and today, the bar is a main attraction in its location on Sahara Avenue, having become a restaurant and nightclub which hosts big-name rock shows. Danny is also the owner of Desert Moon, the production company which is in charge of his bar's live events. Danny also owns Count's Tattoo Company, which was initially named Vince Neil Inc back when it was established in 2009. This business is also apparently going well, just like all other reality TV shows out there. Counting cars is a subject of doubts regarding how real it actually is. Aware of these questions, Danny Coker affirmed that he and his crew don't do acting, despite what people assume. When we're out in public or we're in private, we're the same people because we don't know how to act. You're not going to see somebody who isn't there. Danny's words are convincing enough, but it's for sure that certain aspects about counting cars are edited or staged in some way or another to make the show more attractive to the audience and to satisfy broadcasting time constraints. While knowing that not everything in the show is completely genuine could be disappointing for some people, loyal fans know that the real counting cars entertainment factor comes from its cast personality and work rather than from somewhere else. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.